Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today's topic is why if we had a free will, we could not interact with inanimate matter. And this, is, this will be an interesting show. It's going to be maybe a little difficult to explain, but, um, but I will do that. And as I do with every show, I'm going to like first start out with why this is important. Um, basically, civilization has the very basis of human will completely wrong. You know, we've got this pervasive myth of free will, and it's completely wrong, and it creates problems for, for everything. Okay, it's like the difference, and also, you know, just like philosophically, it's like the difference between living the truth and living a lie. You know, sometimes we might want to live a lie because it feels better, but generally it's, what the, generally it, um, it's better to, um, it's better to go with the truth, you know, than, than um, an illusion. All right, um, so, so yeah, so the, the purpose of the show basically is to get the world on track on this, that, you know, we've got the science, we've got the physics, we've got the psychology, the, the neuroscience, the, uh, the logic, you know, all evidence makes it completely conclusive, conclusive that, that um, our human will is either, depending on how you look at it, unconscious or causal, and that free will is a, is a myth, an illusion, all evidence, even like sometimes, I don't know, I just want to get to, into this um, for a minute. Sometimes people say, but wait a minute, it feels like I have a free will. It feels like, like I'm making decisions completely on my own, but it, it doesn't even do that because like, what we're feeling when we make a decision is not a free will, it's a will. We're feeling, yes, we made a decision. That's the will, the volition part. We made a decision. But was it freely willed? Was it willed um, free from influences that we're not in control of? Um, and, you know, God, you know, much, much more clearly, you know, was it a decision that was made by our conscious mind? Or was it made at the level of the unconscious, in which case it couldn't possibly be a free will? And naturally, as I explained a couple of shows ago, and I've been explaining recently, um, if the decision is made at the level of the unconscious, it has to be um, has to be um, an unconscious willed decision. It can't be freely willed. It can't be made by the unconscious. All right. Um, so let's get to this topic. This is cool. This this should be very cool. Okay, if we had a free will, we could not interact with inanimate um, matter. Okay, this, um, this bottle, okay, I just picked it up, okay? I just decided to pick it up. Now, every, every particle, I don't know if I'm like, I don't know about like advertising laws. I'm not allowed, I don't know if I'm, that's some kind of brand, I don't know. Uh, so, all right, every, every particle in that bottle um, is governed by causal laws. Okay, it's cause and effect. It, it's, you know, these, are, these particles are interacting with reality in a causal way because that's what particles do. It's all cause and effect. And um, this, this particular episode is an answer to certain philosophers, libertarian philosophers, basically, who claim that, um, that, all right, they accept, yes, causality is the fundamental process of the universe. It's the, the fundamental process of change. That is what rules and governs every, everything, at least in terms of like inanimate matter. These, these philosophers will concede that. They will understand that causality is the basic process of the universe. But, then they say, well, wait a minute, we human beings are special. We don't, we're not, you know, we're not bound by those, those causal laws. We're not, um, we're not bound by them. We're, we're, we can overcome them. 
we can't. But but then like this show is about explaining how like if we could, we couldn't interact with that bottle. In other words, like if if a bottle or any kind of inanimate matter, this table, if it's like governed completely by causal laws, and then you have like this this human being somehow interacting with it in an a causal way it's impossible you can't have a particle both behaving causally and a causally at the same time you know causally or according to a free will and i mean the, the whole concept of a, of a free will just interacting with a particle just you know is is um you know as, as we've shown just like it's it's illogical it's just like it doesn't make sense but all right um how do we do this? Okay. You know, all right, this some some questions are so basic, so easy to answer. Well, maybe this one Yeah, no, that that like I was um I was I'm tr I'm wondering whether to keep going over this or just to go on to other matters that um that are much easier to understand cuz this, you know, all right, you have you can't have one particle that you hold to be completely causal interacting in any way with anything that's not causal. Okay, that's probably the best way to explain it. Um, and I think I'm going to have to come back to this because um, it is a, a difficult question to um, to to kind to kind of explain. I, I, I'm sure a lot of you already got it. I'm sure a lot of you haven't yet, but I will come back to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through various considerations um, related to this idea of human will. Um, okay. Let's start with our the level of intelligence determines our choices. Um, yeah, you have one person making a choice, and it might be a different choice than, let's say, a person who's either smarter than that person, and we're talking IQ here because, you know, there's different kinds of intelligence. Let's say logical intelligence. So you have one person um, makes a decision that would be different um, than a person who's maybe either much less logically intelligent or much more logically intelligent. So, and you can, you can understand that. Um, you know, if you're going to multiply 359 times 846, you know, the person who is more intelligent mathematically is probably going to come up with a, the right answer more quickly. Okay, now the thing with intelligence is, um, one, it's 80% genetic, okay? Then there leaves 20% that's up to what? Up to um, how our schools trained us, how our parents related to us when we were young, because intelligence is something that can be increased, you know, through, through effort, whether it's mathematical or logical or musical or whatever. But, see, the thing is, all right, the, the part of our intelligence that, um, that is genetic, that we're born with, that we inherited from our parents, obviously, um, we can't, we're, we have no control of that. So if, if, if our level of, de of intelligence that we, we got from our parents genetically is, is determining our, you know, whatever decision, then surely that decision couldn't be freely made. Um, no, no, that's... Um, if... If... Um, yeah, all right, yeah. If, 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 if the level of intelligence for any decision you make is a factor, is a factor in what the decision is going to be. And if you don't, you don't, you have to remember, you don't decide either one, what genes your parents give you or, or don't, and you don't decide two, how are you going to be raised? Um, in other words, if, if, if you're raised to kind of like, to develop, cultivate that, that intelligence, it's not up to you. It's done like, you know, at a very early age when you, you know, you're not really control, controlling anything, you know, much of anything. Um, now, there could be the argument that's made that, um, well, you could decide to become more intelligent. Um, and as we do, you know, if you want to like, um, and we, we do this, you know, um, we can practice, you know, 
But let's say we do that. Okay, then, as with anything, um, it has a causal past. There, there would be reasons why we decided to, um, <clears throat> to increase, to enhance our, our intelligence um, or not. Um, and also, um, this is actually, I'm glad I got into this because this is something that I'm just, that's coming to me for the first time, really, um, that I can remember. Um, let's say, all right, the idea here is that we have, that intelligence itself is an unconscious process. In other words, that our very intelligence is something that we cannot control. And, and I'm going to explain um, why that is. Um, intelligence needs something to consider to, um, to arrive at a conclusion, okay? Um, let's say it's with numbers, you know, it needs um, 2 plus 2 equals 4, okay? Um, if you've got that, that question, what does 2 plus 2 equal? Um, the intelligence is going to be um, sifting through its memory bank of what does two mean, what does two, what does um, the whole sentence mean, you know, and, and essentially the whole concept of numbers, of one, two, you know, and of addition. So, um, now here's the thing. These concepts, these, these mathematical concepts, um, these logical concepts are not stored in our conscious mind. They can't be, you know, because... Um, I mean, imagine what it would be like to have everything you ever learned in, in math classes and in, in, in school in your conscious mind. You couldn't hold it in there. So it's in a part of your mind that's unconscious to you. you, have no, you you're not even aware that it's there. So this intelligence, your intelligence, in order to access that unconscious information, has to also be at the unconscious level. Yeah, what I'm saying is that human beings think. Our, our, our intelligence operates at a completely unconscious level. And naturally you can understand, if that's the case, why free will is impossible. Because you have a part of us that, that we're not even aware of, you know, making the considerations that ultimately um, lead to our decisions. So, um, so that's a pretty cool thing. So our intelligence, you know, the, the um, and, and you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Explain this again, um, because it's important. With the math, um, you couldn't have the conscious intelligence trying to figure out that math problem, because that, the conscious intelligence doesn't have access, real-time access, to the material in the, in the unconscious. You know, um, how could it? The, the conscious mind doesn't even know that it's there. So... So you have um, the only part of our mind that can rationally work with, the only part of our yeah, mind I, yeah, that can work with, with concepts and mathematical concepts, with anything really, any kind of memory, um, is the unconscious. That's the only part of our mind. So we have the mathematical concepts and the unconscious processing um, of that, that those those concepts in order to um, to make a decision, to find an answer, whatever. But um, but bringing it back to the intelligence again, that intelligence, if that intelligence is, is going to be applied to that unconscious material, it's going to have to be unconscious. That's a very cool thought. Okay, I'm going to go on from here. Um, Okay, let's see. I thought I'd go in order, but then I think it's more fun to just, like, see what, what seems more relevant to right now. All right, yeah, I think this, it's good to go, go through stuff like this. Understanding our wills is causal does not give us license to do as we want. In other words, the fear of many of us is... Many of us, some of us, I don't know. The fear of, of some of us is that 
if everybody understood that nobody has a free will, that everything's like clockwork, predetermined, then nobody's going to take personal responsibility. We're just going to like, you know, abandon all, all our morals or all our principles, all our values, you know, and just do whatever we want because like, because we would be able to get away with it. <laughs> no, we wouldn't be able to get away with it. That's the thing. Um, we're hardwired. We are causally willed, unconsciously willed to seek pleasure and seek goodness. We can't but do that. That's, that's who we are. So, so one, other people around one who would claim that, well, you know, I don't have a free will, so I can do whatever I want and you can't blame me. People would say, well, listen, fine, we can't blame you, but we can't have you going around doing whatever you want, doing what you want is um, contrary or adverse to uh, other people's rights and welfare, right? So, so what would happen would, would be that, you know, that, that kind of behavior that the person would, would want to do would be addressed, you know, um, if it was something that's just unacceptable, it wouldn't be accepted, whatever. But, um, but the key point here is that, you know, we, the other person, society, um, would, would do this with compassion, would, would do this realizing that that other person who, who says that, you know, who thinks that he has license to, um, to do whatever he wants because he doesn't have a free will, that other person does not have a free will. That's the thing. He was completely compelled to make that, um, that erroneous conclusion. So you can't blame him. So you understand, you know, and you try to explain it. You know, it's, all, it's, it's so much more compassionate. But again, the, the basic thing is like, no, civilization is not going to crumble by the world understanding this. In fact, it's going to get much more intelligent and compassionate and um, sane. Okay. Um, this is an interesting, I, I don't, this, this basic um, explanation of why free will is an illusion is, is, is a pretty classic one because um, it comes right from psychology and it's not one that I've dealt with much on the show. So let's, let's um, I should probably devote an entire episode to this, but let's talk about it for a while. Um, <clears throat> okay, our strongest motivation will result in the action we choose. Okay. I'm hungry. Um, I'm thinking that um, that's one motivation. I'm hungry. Um, I feel like taking a walk. Okay, that's another motivation. So on the one hand, I'm hungry. On the other hand, I um, want to take a walk. Um, and I can't do both at once in this case. So, um, now that hunger, that hunger, um, is it something that, um, well, no, no, let's, 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 these are two motivations, okay, um, hunger, taking a walk, they're going to compete with each other, you know, the, 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 the mo motivation to take a walk is going to say to the, to the hunger, dude, you're not all that hungry, you know, it's such a beautiful day, um, let's take a walk, then eat. And the hunger part was to say, no, <laughs> no, because like, you know, I'm hungry now, and it'll, it might say, listen, if, um, if we eat now, we'll have more energy for the walk, and it'll be more pleasant. So you've got these two motivations competing. Now, which one's going to, what are we going to do? We're ultimately going to decide what the greatest motivation, motivator is, like, it's either going to be to the hunger, if the hunger is strong enough and, and um, motivating enough, that's what we'll do. And, and you know, if, 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 if it's about um, taking a walk, that's what we'll do. So always, with every choice we, we have, we have competing motivations. It could be more than uh, two. It could be three, four, whatever. But the strongest of the competing motivations will always win out. And what I want was that what I was beginning to say before, and I want to go into a bit, is like, let's say with the hunger, okay, this is a motivation, and let's say it was stronger than, um, than the motivation to take a walk, and so one out, we, we ate, but here's the thing, with hunger, we don't, we don't get to choose whether we're hungry or not, 
we can choose to ignore hunger, to go, you know, um, to think about it or not. But if we're, if we're feeling this hunger as a motivation, and if it's, this hunger is so strong that it overrode the, um, the motivation to take a walk, we can conclude that that hunger um, is a decider. And, and, and the thing is, no, no, what I'm trying to say is that um, we don't control um, if we're hungry, how hungry we are, you know, when we're hungry. It just comes to it's, it's an unconscious process. And, and it, it's, it's decided in the unconscious, then the unconscious tells the consciousness, hey, dude, you're hungry. You know, so, and so like, and that's the other um, way of, of understanding why free will be impossible. Like, because if you have a, a, a motivation, and, and it could be hunger, it could be thirst, it could be sex, it could be excitement, it could be, you know, survival, whatever it is, any kind of motivation. Um, if, if we're not in control of it, if it's a kind of like a motivation that's hardwired, that, 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 that's in our unconscious, that we only become aware of it when our unconscious um, causes us to, then clearly um, not only is the strongest motivation determining our decisions, but the strongest motivation is actually originating in our unconscious. So you've got two reasons why that kind of um, decision would, could not, could not be freely made, and you know, it'd be impossible. Okay, um, I'm getting tired. Like I do three shows at a time. Got five minutes left. Okay. All right, this is a good one, and I, and I, I like. I, I want to go from this list more because, like, um, a lot of the, the topics that are important don't necessarily deserve or require a complete episode. So when I go through them like this, at least, um, yeah, they get out. Okay. Not feeling guilty does not mean not having a conscience. Okay, here's the thing with that. Um, I want everybody to understand that free will is an illusion so nobody feels guilty anymore. Nobody feels the pain of guilt. Okay, because there's like, guilt is like self-punishment. Guilt is our recognizing that we did something wrong and we're taught as kids, well, when somebody does something wrong, they're punished. So we punish ourselves, okay? Um, and sometimes that punishment works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. Generally speaking, it's not necessary. Generally speaking, when we do something wrong, um, we've got a conscience. That part of our mind that's actually at the unconscious level also, because <laughs> all that stuff is, we have a conscience that um, that knows right from wrong, or that you know tries to um, deduce right from wrong, and um, and if it if it concludes, let's say I did something wrong, okay, my conscience tells me like before, like when I was kind of like I was kind of like assigning free will to these philosophers and just like kind of like. Um, just expressing surprise at how they could be so illogical. You know, that felt a little wrong to me because one, because they don't have free will and two, because, you know, it just doesn't seem the right thing to do anyhow. But anyway, like my conscience knows this. Now, I don't have to feel guilty that, that I did that because it wasn't my doing, you know? So, so basically what I'm, what I'm going to, what my conscience is going to lead me to do is, is to say, Fine, I'm gonna like um, pay more attention that I that I don't kind of like behave in the same way in the future, but I'm not gonna punish myself because I wasn't responsible for what happened. What, what you know for for my saying that you know, and that's a very crucial point to remember. In other words, like to the extent that um, excuse me, to the extent that we understand that um, guilt is no longer, or the pain of guilt, the suffering of guilt, is no longer logical or necessary, perhaps, as we understand that our human will is causal or unconscious, 
then we're going to be um, we are going to be sparing ourselves a lot of pain. You know, because again, it's like the, it's the difference between like knowing something was wrong and deciding that fine, I'm going to try to correct them in the, in the future. And under the free will perspective, knowing that it was wrong, well, I'm going to punish myself because I, you know, because I freely willed it and it was wrong and I deserve the punishment. And, you know, that's the way things are. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, okay. All right, this is like we got uh, another minute and a half. I better like look for kind of a short one. All right, here's another one. We are predetermined to choose what seems more, most reasonable. In addition to the hedonic, the moral imperatives, the procreative imperative, the um, survival imperative, these, these motivations, we have basic motives, drives. We have a basic motive to be rational. To be rational. I mean, this is like, you know, we can't not be rational. You know, sometimes our emotions will get in the way and the emotion may not seem rational to us, may seem to um, avoid rash reason. But that's another, like, if we are destined, if we're hardwired, programmed to always do what we consider is most reasonable between two options, that's not a freely willed decision. That's a decision based on that programming. We're programmed to be more rational, you know, to be rational as, as much as we can. <laughs> That's good. Okay. All right. I, um, we've got about 27 seconds left. Yeah, I just did three shows. It's cool. Um, I think, I think um, people can't but get this. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how, how soon it happens. Um, you know, I guess I'm, I'm pioneering this. When I was doing the happiness show, it, you know, a couple of years after um, I brought that out, you know, happiness was hot everywhere in the media. So hopefully something like that is going to happen. All right. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you soon.